comment on that. So this week we're starting with uh, Python. Uh, when I say we're starting with Python is you get a chance to actually um, see the Python code as explicitly explained to you as opposed to me just throwing in up some Python on the screen for particular examples. Uh, so that's what our lecture is today, a little bit about Python syntax. Um, the labs are also that. The first lab there, lab seven, is going to be sort of line by line Python. Uh, so we'll, we're going to look at Python in two ways of doing it, as completing a file and line by line, which we almost never do. And um, yeah, so there's a Dropbox for those. So you can start on those straight away. Um, then there is a little note about the assignment. There is an assignment for this week. So these numbers refer to the uh, labs in code.org. So, you know, for example, you started off with labs one, two, three, or, which were these games of angry birds and finding things. So uh, what will happen is at the end of the semester, I will go and I'll have a look and see which labs you've completed in code.org. Uh, if you've completed all the labs that have been explained to you that you must do. Now, when I say all the labs, that's not all the labs there, right? So for example, you don't have to do labs four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because you're doing one, two, three, and then 10, 12, 13. Yeah, as long as you do all the ones that have been, been assigned to you, you'll get your 10 marks. So that's like 10 easy marks. Now, why I say it's 10 easy marks is because if you do the lab, you get it right, right? You can't, you can't move on until you get it right. So um, there's 10 marks for you. Please do that so that you get your 10 marks. Now, while, before I sort of launch into the, to the lecture, I wanted to say a little bit about Python. Um, you will need to use Python uh, on a computer. Now, most of the classrooms have Python on it in the form of the IDLE, IDE, Integrated um, Development Environment. But you should probably practice at home a bit. Um, old saying I used to have was I learned how to write computer programs at two o'clock in the morning. And what I mean by that is uh, you need a lot of practice and that's when people are doing it. So um, you can do that by navigating to python.org and at python.org, you'll find that this is, we say it's open source, it's free. You can go to the downloads drop down menu and you can find the code that you want for whatever machine you're using. So most of us will be using Windows. And so we'll take that Python, the latest, Python uh, and download that. If you're using a Mac, make sure you, you get the Mac, the Mac one. Now, other platforms, I'm not sure what it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if they have it for, um, for what do they got? They got it for AIX, um, which is like, um, which is, which is a, um, um, it's like, uh, very much like our Linux, uh, Unix, it's a, it's a, it's a, a Unix type uh, operating system, iOS, OS 390. So these are operating systems for sort of, um, when there's for Linux, these are operating systems used by large companies, basically, so industrial systems. So you won't be needing those, but use your Mac or your Windows one download and use that. Uh, when you do that, uh, you'll have idle installed. And so for example, I've got idle installed on this, Seems like I've got two versions of Idle, a 60, no, no. Yeah, one's newer than the other. And uh, when you launch it, you'll come up with something that looks like this into which you can write some Python code. So if you see the three chevrons, that means that you're going to be doing Python one line at a time. So for example, I can just write the standard sort of computing thing to start off the thing. And uh, yeah, there we go, so print. Now um, that's, if you're in this mode, which is the shell, idle shell, uh, you will not be able to put a full program in. You'll, you'll only be able to sort of enter one line at a time. So of course you want to use a full program at a time. So if you want to do that, you want to get the file menu and get a new file, in which case you get a new screen like this. This is where you enter your program. You'll have to save that program before you can run it, but then you at least you'll be able to use a, um, a full program. I got a phone call that's coming from Dubai, so I'm not gonna answer it. Probably so. Do you mind if I answer it? Sorry. 
No, I, I'm in the middle of a video. So I'm not going to answer. Um, hold on a second here. So there's Python. You can play with that. Um, now, the other thing, while, while we're talking about Python, you should, you should introduce yourselves to W3 schools. I don't know if you've used that for anything yet, but you, sorry about my um, having the caps lock on. I really should put my glasses on. I'll be able to, I'll be a lot better at this if I do that, All right? So W3 Schools is an awesome resource for people who are learning how to write computer programs. Uh, now, what you'll find with W3 Schools um, is you can learn how to do so many things. One of the things that you're gonna have on there is gonna be learning how to do Python, I think. There we go, learn Python. And so with, uh, you can go through there and do it a little bit at a time. W3 schools would be a big help. Another big help that you'll have if you really are serious about learning Python is you can find it in YouTube. So learning how to do Python basics, right? Python, you, I recommend that if you got lots of time, these guys, do, there's all kinds of Python courses that you could find on YouTube that could be quite helpful to you. If you had some time, you don't want, you don't mind watching videos, that could be helpful to you as well. Uh, so have a look at that. Um, let's start on our lecture, I guess. Um, let's start on that. So we've only got a few slides today. We'll try and make it as painless as possible. Basic syntax in Python. Some of this you've seen already because I've done some Python. I've shown you some Python for the when we were doing our um, algorithms. Uh, now, the progression of this course basically follows the progression that you would use in solving a problem using computers. Com computational thinking using computers to solve problems. So what do we do in computational thinking? We break the problem down into smaller components, right? Decomposition. Uh, then what do we do? We look for patterns, right? We look for patterns and then we can, uh, we can do some abstraction, do some abstraction, look for patterns. Lastly, we do an algorithm. Once we've got our algorithm in place, our algorithm will be uh, implemented using a flowchart or pseudocode. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and do our coding. So the, the actual writing the code represents the last sort of part of solving the problem using our computers. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. So uh, as I said, we write one um, instruction at a time. Now I showed you, remember that uh, just, you don't have to remember too far back, like two minutes ago, uh, you may, when I opened up the, uh, the idle um, IDE, you would have seen the thing with the three chevrons. I was only able to use one, one line of code at a time. Um, if I wanted to, use, to do a, a whole program, I have to save it as a file. And then the Python interpreter will implement it one line of code at a time, but at least I won't have to tell it to do each new line. Um, now we do use comments with a hash symbol. Anything to the right of a hash symbol on a line will be disregarded by the, by the interpreter. Uh, so Python just doesn't even look at it, it's just for us. So that's why we call it a comment. It's there for us to notice what we're doing in our work. You'll see me do that again tonight because we'll do. I'll do a couple of little things. Before. Um, but maybe you've seen that in some previous programs that I've shown you as I've tried to show you uh, Python implementation of uh, algorithms as we go. Um, indentation is so important in Python. I can't overstress it. Your program will be wrong if the indents are wrong. You must get the indents right in your program. Luckily, Python has something to help you with that. Um, basically, what you do is whenever you start a new control structure in Python, you start it with a colon. And then all you have to do is just train your hands, right? So slap your hands, don't do any backspacing. Well, you, you, unless you want to go back to a uh, out, out dent. You don't use backspacing to do an out dent. And also, and don't do any space, space you know, hitting the space bar to, to move the indent. You just use your enter key. You do the colon, enter key, it will do the indentation for you. You do a backspace when you don't want to go an outdent only. And Python will do the, um, your IDE will do the indenting for you and it'll be correct. If you start playing around with a lot of backspacing and spacing and your program won't work. <laughs> you know, and that will be the error. It'll tell you, uh, okay. So how you can fix it if you've got the indent wrong is only use backspace and, and tab. You use a tab, you don't use a space key. Unless you know exactly how many spaces are in a tab. 
because that, you know, when you said, well, never mind, <laughs> that's all right. Um, now about variables in Python, we, Python is a good programming language to learn as a beginner. And because it's kind of forgiving and there's some things that it allows you to do with shortcuts. Now that does not mean it's a baby sort of programming language. No, it's not like that. What it is, is it has very powerful sort of libraries that are available, but it has some things in it that makes it kind of easy to get started, I think. And one of the things is the variables. Basically, when you create a variable in, in Python, you give a name, then you use the equal sign, which doesn't mean equal in this case, it means take the value of, and that'll assign a value to it. And whatever it, whatever it is that you're taking the value of, Python will automatically set the, the type of variable to that type. Now, the other thing about variables, as it says here, is they are case sensitive. You see these three variables here, uh, law with lowercase, law all uppercase, and law it started with capitalized. Uh, they would be treated differently by Python, even though to us it all looks like the same, right? It's all law, right? Those are actually three very different uh, variables. And generally speaking, as it says here to be consistent, with a variable, we use lowercase or we use lower camel case. And so we're not gonna use capitals like this for a variable. We use that for constants, just like we do in pseudocode. Uh, and we probably wouldn't have a variable like this with a capital L like that. We'd, we'd have a variable like this. Um, now, just for consistency, it just makes it easier to read as well. People will look at that. If, if people looked in your code and saw a capital L-A-W, they might think that that's supposed to be a constant. So don't use that like for a variable. So when we create a variable and we assign a value to it, Python will automatically assign a type to it. So here we are creating three different variables and we're assigning three different values to them. The first one, we're assigning a number, which is an integer number. We can see it's an integer number because it has no decimal component. And so Python will automatically assign that variable, which num, remember how variables work? is a place in the memory is going to be set aside. And this, this name will be used as an index to find what's in that place. And so there will be a variable called num, which will be created. And the number two would be stored in it. Python automatically will assign int as the type for that variable. Now, if you put a decimal variable, see we've got a decimal point there. So this would have to be a float. So if it's a decimal, so here we're creating a variable called DEC, DEC, call it whatever you want, but it's DEC, and the type would be float. Here we're creating a var variable called sentence, and we're assigning a string to it. We know it's a string because it's, be because it's a bunch of characters that can be found in a keyboard. Some of those are letters of the alphabet, some of them is special character, and even spaces are included. You can, you can put anything that you can find on the keyboard basically as your string. So it could have the special characters in it, it could have numbers, but the thing about it is it's got this, this quotes around it. Now I say it's got quotes, it could be double quotes or it could be single quotes, doesn't matter. As long as they're the same. If you open with a double quote, you have to close with a double quote. If you open with a single quote, you have to close with a single quote. Um, we can do a bunch of mathematics with this. Now, not all of the mathematical types are included here. Again, I would, Recommend I would um, refer you to uh, w3.schools. Uh, you know, if it, there's a lot more information you can find out about um, the mathematics that we can do in uh, Python. Uh, and I'll just show you what I mean by that, I guess. So if I went to, um, let's do a search here, uh, w3schools, oops, sorry, uh, Python math. Uh, not the math module. Oh, gosh. So we got some functions there. Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, maybe I should do a different search. Um, operators, Python operators. That's what I meant. So if we look at this, we can see there's a lot of different math operators that we could use. So I uh, mentioned there is the uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Uh, modulus, uh, exponentiation, and floor division, which we refer to as integer division. 
and normal division. There's a bunch of other operators too, if you're really wanting to get into some exciting stuff there. All of that information is available to you in W3 schools, and there's a nice explanation of it. So I'm really in this lecture, we're just sort of scratching the surface. Um, as I said, there's a lot more resources that are available to you to sort of get into that. So what we could look at is we could look at this, plus obviously is going to add things together, uh, subtraction with a minus. Uh, we do use this asterisk sign for multiplication. Two asterisks together, we would use for exponentiation. X raised to the power of Y. Uh, um, you can do that in Python. Uh, so we've got this, this, uh, this special division here with two slashes. I didn't make that noise, did I? Uh, you watching YouTube videos? All right, so two slashes means that we're doing a uh, integer division, it's called here. If you look on W3 schools, the, it refers to that as floor division. What we mean by floor division is the result of the division, we discard the decimal portion of the division. So what I mean by that is, let's say I did this. I said x is e takes the value of 10, 3. Well, th then this x would be a float, and its value would be 3.3 like that, right? That would be the result if you did this. X takes the value of 10, 10 slash 3. But if you said y takes the value of 10 slash slash 3, this is our floor division it's called in, um, in W3 schools, or we call it here integer division, then y will be a, an int, and its value will be three because the integer, uh, sorry, the, the non-integer part of the, um, of the number, the decimal portion would be discarded. Uh, as I said, there's modular division, doesn't seem to show up in our, in our, um, in our notes, but uh, we might look at that later. Uh, what do you mean modular? All right, so let's do that. Let's say if we said Z takes the value of 10 mod three, uh, what that would be is all we take is the remainder. So the remainder of this would be, well, 10 with one remainder. So that would be, that would, would be a, an int, but it would be one, which is the remainder. Uh, so we, we, there, there is a very good time to use modular division. Um, I don't know why it's not in the notes, um, but it's not in the notes. So I'm not gonna put too much more. I'm not gonna say more about it, okay? Uh, unless it sort of shows up. Uh, okay, so yeah, we have these different things that we can use, plus minus, multiply and divide. And we saw we have the floor divide or the integer division there as well. Now, what we can do, so suppose I did this Z like that, I could then do um, K takes the value of uh, float uh, Z. And then K would be a float value, and its value would be um, 1.0. So uh, you can take an integer number and convert it to a float. You can take a string and convert it to a float or, or, or something like that. And we do that. You might have seen me do that when we do use the input. We, because all inputs, when we do inputs in uh, Python, all inputs from the user are received by Python as a string. So if we want to input a float or an int, we're going to have to change it using this kind of thing. We call this we call this casting. So again, if you look on on uh, W3 schools and you want to find out about this, they'll use the term casting. Yes. So, uh, so if I go on Python right now and write uh, x equals to ten over three, will it give me an answer three point three six? Yes. Let's see. So, uh, well, I wanted to use that other Python thing. Let's use the other Python. It's this one, right? So uh, you want to do uh, X takes the value of uh, 10 slash three, right? And then we, then we could um, print X. Uh, 
Okay. So yeah, so you can do that and uh, whatever. Uh, right, so, um, oh, well, let's do this. Mm, could I do an int on that? Let's go back to that, because that was so much fun. Let's say um, y takes the value of integer. We're gonna, I, I don't know if we can do this. Wait, let's find out if it'll work of X. It might not work because this is not an integer value. Well, okay, so print Y. I don't know if I even need the brackets for that. And so when I converted it to an integer, it's an integer now. All right, so integer, it kind of, it's kind of what the slash slash did, right? So you can change from one data type to another. Um, here's another one, right? So if I say um, Z takes a value of, uh, I'm going to ask the user, uh, oh, let's do this. So what I've got is I've got a number, right? but it's actually a string. If I want to do any calculation on it, let's say that K, takes the value of Z divided by two, I will get an error. So why have I got an error? Because, why have I got an error? Because this is not a number, this is a string. But what I could do now is I could say J, or not K, but J takes the value of int K, oh, Z, isn't it? Int Z. So Z is a string. I'm gonna convert that string to an integer. Now, if I say that um, K takes the value of Z divided by two, I shouldn't get an error. I do get an error. Oh, hold on. I should have said Z divided by two. <laughs> All right. Yeah, of course, because uh, Z, doesn't change. So K takes the value of J divided by two. I shouldn't get an error because now that's a number. Print K. Got to have brackets. Well, we found that out. Print K. And so it gives us this number, which is a division of this number here. Notice, even though this is an even number, it tur turned it into a, into a, um, a float. Well, that fun. Okay. Uh, about the strings, you saw me put a string into Python just now. I put a string two, three, four, and then I converted that to a number and I divided by two to get one, one, seven. String is a special type of variable. Excuse me, guys. I hope I'm not interrupting anything too much. Is it okay if I sort of finish the lesson? Um, Am I right? Okay. So a string is a complex variable. It's a, co a complex variable is made up of other variables, I guess you could say. And what the string is made up of is a bunch of characters. So for example, here between the double quotes, we've got multiple letters, which are characters. Now they don't have to be letters of the alphabet. They could be special. They could be spaces, other special characters, but each one of these can be separated from the rest and indexed, and we can do that. You'll see that in the, in the following slides. The other thing that we can do with strings, we see that here, is we can add them together. When we add them together, we call that concatenation. Concatenation, you'll need to learn that because that's what we do when we add two strings together. Yes? Uh, now when you say uh, hello, can you put greetings equal to hello? Or no, you can just say print hello, and then, Oh, well, do you want to do this? Um, it's going to take longer if I do this, but I could do this in Python. You want, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you don't need to, you don't need to. All right, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. We can do it later, maybe. But uh, if we add these together, what it would do is it would print hello, everyone. So you can add strings together. That works quite nicely. Um, 
Now we've got this special function that's built into, func into Python called len. We've got a bunch of special functions that work with strings. Len is one of them. There's a few others that we're gonna see. How len works is however big the string is, len will return a number, which is how big that string is. So in this case, it'll return the number five because there's one, two, three, four, five characters in that string. Uh, so this is how the string works. Here's our string. It's got five characters in it. We start counting from zero. But each of these positions, we can use that as an index. So we can say index position zero. And we can, we can say, I could do a print on this. And we could just print the H. Or we could do uh, index position three and just pr print the L. So we can get just... A, we, this is what I mean by being a complex variable. We can get parts of that string. We can separate it. Now, it doesn't have to be just a single character. We can get a substring. So a substring is going to be a string within the string. And so what we're doing here is between the square brackets, we're saying starting from position one. And by the way, position one is not the first position, is it? Position one is the second position because the first position is position zero. But starting from this position one, and stopping before you get to position four, that's what that means. Don't include position four, but stop before you get to position four. Get everything between that. And that would be positions one, two, and three. And so greeting one, one through four would produce L. I don't know, maybe, maybe you like to do, you know, what the heck? Let's just do it in Python, right? So I'm going to, to uh, oh, the other Python. This, um, yeah, all right, so let's say greeting takes the value of hello. Spelled, spelled badly. And then, what was the other word? Everyone, yeah, everyone. No, it wasn't everyone. What was the other variable? Subject, Subject. was it? Subject takes the value of everyone. All right, so what we could do is, uh, so for example, I can do a print on, um, on, uh, on greeting. So notice I'm not using any, any um, um, if, I did a, if I did this, that'll print greeting, All right? So whatever's between the quotes is what's gonna be printed, but, but if I do this, print greeting, it's gonna print whatever's in the variable. Whatever's in the variable is hello. Now, what if I do this? If I say my uh, G is just another variable, and it's gonna be equal to greeting plus subject. Okay, so now I'm gonna print G. And it should say, hello, everyone. That's kind of bad. So what you'd probably do is you'd say, okay, greeting is, a G is actually equal to a greeting plus a space plus subject. And then you would get, when you print it, you'd get, uh, it's G, isn't it? So now you get hello everyone. So uh, I, here I'm adding three strings together. This, this is called concatenation. We're adding the three strings together. We get that. Uh, now, what I could do is I could say uh, length is equal to len of G. And then I could print the length. And it's 14 characters long, apparently, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's, that's how long it is. Uh, what if I just wanted to print G and I want the second character? The second character would be G1. Agree that? Well, let's just print it actually. So print the second character, G1. So what should it print? It should print 
the second character is E, right? So print E. Or, oh, sorry, uh, or I could say, all right, well, I want you to print um, from character number five through to character number eight or nine, but not, not including nine. So this should, this should print, okay, so here's character zero, one, two, three, four, five. Five is gonna be a space. So let's not do that. Let's do, let's start from character six. Six is gonna be E. So I'm gonna print ever. So that'll be six, seven, eight, nine, right? So this needs to be a 10. If I do that, that should give, oh, now what I'm, that's not gonna work, is it? It's gonna to have to be G. How is it 14? Count. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The length is equal to len g. Here, length is a number. Len is how long is it? Len means how long. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to print starting from the six, from character number six and ending at character number nine. That's what this means. Start at six, end at nine. And I had to put the square brackets there. That should print, this is character six, right? The E is character six. Because zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ever. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, you can have so much fun playing around with strings. Anyways, I'll leave you guys to have some fun playing around with strings. That's what that was about. Um, yeah, right. So other things that you can do is you can convert things from uppercase to lowercase and from lowercase to uppercase. Should we do that? Yeah, why not? Since we seem to be in the mode of showing things on there, right? So we've got a thing here called G. Let's make it uppercase. So I could just say uh, new, uh, not new, that's a dumb idea. Yeah, and the M takes a value of G upper. And then I could print M. And then I could say L takes a value of M lower. So I'm converting it from uppercase to lowercase and print L. So we got an uppercase hello, hello everyone, and we got a lowercase hello everyone using those. Anyway, so you can play with that if you like. We've sort of shown that there. Uh, lower, upper converts it to uppercase, lower converts it to lowercase. By the way, you'll be able to look at this video I think I'm recording. Am I still recording? Yes. All right, so um, how do we do an if statement? What you're gonna see, and this will bring us to the end of this lecture by the time we get through this bit, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at an if statement, an if then else statement, and an if, elif, else statement. All right, so uh, in the first one, what it is is the condition is true or false. If the condition is true, we do the stuff here. If it's not true, we don't. It's just as simple as that. We always do the stuff at the bottom. At the bottom, the stuff at the bottom is not part of the if statement. So once we finish the if statement, we go and do the stuff at the bottom. But before we before we do that, we have to check is the condition true. If it's true, we do this stuff, and then we go and do the stuff at the bottom. So an example of that is this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that and put it into a Python code. You could do this. I'm just copying it from the slide. Uh, I'm going to go into Python. And this time I'm going to do it as a file. And I'm going to say, okay, well, this program is about age and, and 18 or something. Oh, so if I'm going to do that, I need to do that as a comment. So you see when I do the comment, it comes as red. That means everything that's red is not used by the program. I'm just going to paste in there this program. So there's the program. I took it straight off the, off the um, PowerPoint. Uh, when I go to run it, it's, why am I doing that? When I go to run it, I'm going to, 
it's going to save it. I have to save it as a file first. And then it will it, then it will run once it's saved as a file. So there's a program. How old are you? And the, the, what the, if we look and see what does this program do? It checks. If the person's age is more than 18, it's going to say you're going to be that many years until you're that age. So let's say that we use 18. That's not more than 18, is it? So that's why it didn't do it because it wasn't over 18. So we didn't do these two things because they're the if. Can you see the indenting? But we did the one that was unindented. We said, have a nice day. Let's run the program again. And let's start this time. We're going to do it with a number which is less than 18. Uh, so, sorry, let's run it. How old are you? This time we're going to do 17. And what it says is, have a nice day. Oh, sorry, I should do it. I was going to do a number bigger than 18, right? That's the same as 18, because 18 isn't bigger than 18. One bigger than 18. Let's do 19. Uh, and what it does when I do 19 is it says it actually goes and does the stuff inside the if statement, right? Inside the if statement is in so many years, you will be that age. Now notice this, we're using pluses. Why are we using pluses? Because we're concatenating a string. And we're using str, which is converting a number, which is a, this is an integer value, but we're converting it to a string. This is called casting, where you put a variable inside a bracket and then you change the type. So this was an integer, we're gonna change it to a string. And by changing them to strings, we can add them all together into one big string. And then we can print it out. And that's what we've done there. All right, let's continue on with the lecture on that. Um, so that is using an if statement. It's true, we do this stuff. If it's not true, we don't do it. Well, let's make it a little bit more interesting. So now we got the situation of if then else. Basically how if then else works is the same as we it did when we were doing the, the pseudocode. If the condition is true, there's only one condition here. If the condition is true, then we do this stuff. But if it's not true, then we do this stuff. So one of these two things is gonna happen. Exactly one of them, right? Either this or that. This thing at the bottom is not part of the if statement. It will always happen. So in this case, we're going to say, all right, well, let's see. Well, sorry, I, I went on a bit far, far. So if you're bigger than 18, fine. We're going to do this double H thing. Otherwise, we're going to say, get the remainder. So I'm going to do that. There's actually a little bit of an error in this. So we'll have to fix that in the program, but we'll do that and then we'll get that going. So let's have a look in our program. I'm just gonna substitute that in there for what we had. And so what we've got is a if else situation. Now there's an error in here. And this is, this. if you look at it, there's nothing wrong with that code, but Python tells me there is. I know that because I've done this before. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Let's run it. Yeah, see invalid characters. It doesn't, there's something wrong with the character as it's done in um, PowerPoint. And so we just remove those characters and do it again. And then, then we'll get, get rid of that, that thing. So 18 minus age. So now it should be okay. So, I mean, it doesn't look any different, but that got rid of the error, I think. So how old are you? And there's another error that's gonna show up now. Okay, let's say I'm 16. It's gonna say in 16 years, you'll be 18. Well, that's not right. So that's what we call a logic error, right? Before we had a syntax error, which was because of our copying something from PowerPoint, which was not compatible. But now we've got a logic error. And if we look at this, it's saying, well, we're printing the age. What we should be printing is we should be printing the remaining because we calculated the remaining. So why didn't we use it? So here's the remaining calculated there. We use it in our printout. Now it'll work better. Okay, so how do I keep reading? So save it. How old are you? 16. What it should say is you got two years until you're 18. Now, what if they were 18? Does that change? No. So if they were 19, it's still gonna say in 19 years you're gonna be 38. So we do how this works. 
is we do one or the other. We don't do both. We do one or the other, right? We either do double the age or we do, you got so many years to go. So we either had so many years to go or we did double the age. That's how a if then else works. Notice we don't actually use the word if, uh, so we don't actually use the word then. Oh, by the way, the brackets we are optional. You don't need the brackets in Python. Yeah, awesome. And uh, yeah, so last one. Last one is we're gonna do if else, uh, if l if else. And you're gonna see we got three options. Only one of the three will be will be um, process. Let's see. So in our slideshow that's here, what do we got? If, if this condition is, look, there's two conditions. If this condition's true, we do this and we don't do anything else. That's how that works. If this is true, we do this and we skip down to here. But if it's not true, we go to the elif and we check that condition. If that's true, we do this and then we skip down to here. But if it's not true, we do the else and then we skip down. So there's three possibilities. One of those three will, will happen. Exactly one of those three will happen. Not two, not three, one, not zero. One of these things will happen, okay? So let's check it and see. So if the person is more than 18, then this will happen. But if they're not more than 18, then it'll check to see if they're more than 12. And if they're more than 12, then this will happen. But if they're not more than 12, then this will happen, okay? But for all of them, it will say, have a nice day because that's not part of the if then else. So let's let's look at that one. Um, let's take the whole thing. Now, remember we got an error in this. So we're gonna have to fix that error. Well, let's see. The error was in here. I, it was, uh, there, there was a problem with the, there's something in the space or something. Uh, so space equals uh, 18 minus age. So that's got rid of that. I mean, it looks the same, but there was an error in there. And the other thing that was an error was this thing here needs to be remaining without the comma. And okay, so now we've got a if, l if, else. So one of these three things is gonna happen. The others are not. Let's run it and see. Oh, why do I keep going to a Python shell? I don't know. So how old are you? I mean, supposing the person is 19. What it should say is you're gonna have 19 years until you doubled your age, right? Yeah, that's what it says. You'll be double your age. And notice it says, have a nice day. They all say have a nice day because that's outside the if statement. Let's run it again. This time we're gonna do 17 years, this is below, right? So we had one above and now we got one below 19, uh, below 18, but above 12. So this one is gonna ask me, am I above 12, right? Or no, it's gonna, it's not going to ask me anything. It's going to process. Are you above 12? It's going to say something like uh, you got so many years until you're 18. It's going to say you got one year until you're 18. Yes, there you go. One year until you're 18. Why? Because it wasn't bigger than this. This was false. So it had to go to this. And this was true. So it said that. All right. And the last one. I don't know. I can have a look at it after, but I don't know because I can't see it. So the next one is we're gonna have it not more than 12. So it's 11. So this should say, you're too young, right? You are too young. All of them say, have a nice day. Wasn't that fun? I don't know if you enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed that. Python is just so much fun. Class. All right, so what do you guys got to do? Please, uh, yeah, by all means, have a look at W3 Schools. Learn as much as you like about Python there. Other place where you can learn more about Python, as I said, is YouTube. A lot of people there talking about Python. Uh, make sure you download Python from python.org, your idol. Put that on your computer so you can play with it. Um, you've got two labs to do. The first lab is going to be one line at a time stuff. The second lab is writing some code. That's it. I mean, you know, we're, uh, I think that you understand this stuff, right? I hope.
no, we just keep working on it until you do, right? Uh, so we'll work on that. You do have these other labs to do in code.org. That's it for me for today, unless you guys got some questions. Okay. Call us.